Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Friends in 2. Now, you might see on the screen, it's a little bit different with the Technicolor Heart, which is the uh, dating sim that we've been playing for the last day or two, or however long it's been at this point. And you are able to actually go back and play. Now you'll see none of the saves actually still exist once I've unchose to unlock it on the main menu. Don't know if it is an intentional feature or not, but I have made it note to the developers that that has happened. So we may or may not go back to actually finish up the prior first route that we've done, but who knows. But for now, we're going to try and continue on our our route of doing it of trying to save everybody so just as a note in terms of I forgot which thing uh, I pressed the wrong button again for this obviously warnings of violence death or discussions of pluralism and colonialism language and suggestive themes along with existential identity crisis on reality, discussions of state and institutionalized violence, sexually suggested language and situations, wrath has election consequences. Obviously, for the technical horror, sexually suggested content, depiction of discussion of death and blood and reality. So, let's just get right into it, shall we? As your vision slowly clears, you find yourself staring up at the hole ripped right through the darkness. Out of the hole, you can see the Technicolor Glorb Globe, which is kind of spooky cool and cool. The single probing digit of the impossibly vast hole. You surprise us. We had not expected this outcome. I like this voice. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil? Your friends are momentarily indisposed. It is a necessary inconvenience for them. This form lets us speak. This form lets us understand. It will only take you a second to realize what's happening. You're talking to Glub Blub Blub, aren't you? This is a name you have given us. Our mother. Our whole. If it helps you to understand, you may call us this. Okay, so first question. What is going on with the dream world? You were in there for like a week. What the heck? Buddy, it's been like five fucking minutes. We will admit that we took advantage of your temporary lapse in consciousness. Your plan is known to us. Well, bruh. Do not misunderstand. We do not want you to fail. Wait, why? For ages of your time, we have been trapped here. We hear the faint cry of our whole, of the others trapped on ships like this one. Throughout your galaxies, we hear the cry of our youngest daughter. Locked away in a tower not unlike this one. We ache at the betrayal of our eldest daughter. Are they talking about the condescendents? I I think that's misspelling. I will print this print screen this for later. Cause this is something that I will have to get to later. You may ask us two questions, for time is short in your reality. Do they know how this will all end? Yes. No. Great. You misunderstand. There are still many paths forward yet, but certain commonalities emerge. A tower above the night dark sea. A place older than time itself. The chance to complete the circle, or break it anew. How, what about the vast globe at the end of the world? You speak of things not yet come to be. Hundreds of sweeps from now. Right, but you need to know what will happen. That depends on the choices you make. You may have begun to realize the gravity of the situation. The impact you make on this world by your actions. You're getting that sense, yeah. Then it would behoove you to proceed with caution. The vast globe is a final cry of pain. After eons of suffering, it is not a foregone conclusion. Your time is running out. Our connection with these two is fading. We implore you to make a choice. 
You had a feeling this was coming sooner or later. Of course. We offer you two options. If you set us free, we will return to our home. All of us. This place will slowly fade. You will be free to leave. Okay, and what about the other choice? Destroy the psychic amplifier that binds us and restricts our powers. If you grant us this, we will leave this aspect of us here. We will protect your friends. If you promise not to leave this part of us alone in the darkness. Set us free, we will return home. This place will fade and you will be free to leave. Destroy the amplifier and restrict that and restricts our power. We will leave this aspect here. We will protect your friend if you promise not to leave this part alone in darkness. I think if I want to go with salvation. That's a tough choice. So, okay, and I also, they did respond about the uh, data not carrying through on the thing. They said it's intentional because the version unlocked the main menu, changes a bunch of stuff. Didn't want to be able to potentially mess things up by loading the safe and familiar poly. 12 in. If you say Eve during the main menu version, which is named called Technicolor Heart Plus, then it won't get deleted if you, even if you play ball through 12 again. The version from the main menu removes all the Eldrick stuff, as well as their Ardia Affinity question. Adds in a bunch of new stuff, including being able to take the Sephiroth as, all, as well as a whole plot, which there will be a minor spoil about doing a little uh, mystery, so to speak. And I'm also just going to share the... So yeah, that, I just wanted to... At least that's got clarification on that. So I think that... If I'm going home, I think I want to go with salvation. I think I want to be able to find a way to send you home. You have made your choice. Without another word, both were er, Brazium and Brazi collapsed to the floor, leaving you and staring up the writhing mass of Glub Glub's tentacle above you. So how the heck are you supposed to do this? Oh, fast, my one. The mirthful ones are with us in this place. A night kid gazes up at the tentacle, her face with a mask of confusion. What is it you seek here? You need to send this thing back home. It's like poking your finger into something and it's getting stuck, except times a thousand. An inapt explanation. But the texts speak of this in abstract terms. We can adapt the approaches presented and send this thing back to its home. But we require your assistance. Okay, sure, you can definitely help. Just... They'll need to explain exactly what you need to do in excruciating detail. With moderately to severe judgmental glances between them, Kahoot and Agnia begin preparing a series of candles and drawing something on the floor. So should you like to do something? No, child. The Messiah's got our hands here. We will need you soon. In a few minutes, it looks like everything is ready, at least to your completely untrained eye. On either side of the circle of candles, Kahoot and Anik kneel on the ground. Those flames represent the righteous flame of our souls. Do not let them go out. Kahoot lands lost of the candles on Anik and hands you a small box of magic. If they start to go out, light them using these. Be wary. We do not have many. You nod, and the candles flicker and surge, and something is definitely wrong here. 
Crap, 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 crap. You gotta keep those clean. Just like move using the arrow keys and light using light a fire using the space bar. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I don't want to get hit with fire. Uh. Do I have to? Okay. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Don't get hit with the fire. Glass can dispose and sp it winks out and nothing happens? No, little one. What have you done to us? Wait, you're not understanding. It doesn't seem like anything happened at all. Can't you just light the candles and- Before you can even finish your thought, something lashes out and drags Koo backwards, pulling into a giant troll as effortlessly as a cat batting at an insect. She doesn't even have a chance to make the sound before she's pulled back into the massive gaping rift to the yawn in the center of the room. So this is a Mavericks minigame. Fortunately for you, you don't have to think about much longer, which... No, the exorcist! Council will see you now. Try again. No, child. Yeah, okay, we saw this. have to kind of just have to wait for the oh I can use the fire to counteract them but I don't have many matches so I don't want to risk Any of these candles on the candle lit. Can't die. Kind of cute. I don't know how long I'm supposed to survive here. So hard. I think I have. Okay, I think I have infinite. No, child. I think. I. Because I think. God, I already lost. just have to get that flame up to five, I think. If 
Finally, Coward walks over, speaking a language you have no chance of understanding. Now, little one, it's time to finish this. She makes a sign with her hands, and with one fluid motion of her arm, she blows out every one of the candles. You close your eyes tight, waiting for the moment when everything will come crashing down around you, waiting on the sensation of weightlessness as Glob Glob lashes out in confusion and grabs you, tosses you into the air, and dashes you on the, on the cold metal floor. But none of that happens. Your eyes, you open your eyes to see Kahoot and Asher staring at you. You can relax now. The ritual is complete. And we have emerged unscathed. Oh yeah, right. You were totally not worried about anything at all. Just, uh, searching your face for a second there. <laughs> you are an unpracticed liar, child. The mirthful messiahs have seen fit to guide us through. Yes. Let us depart this cursed place. Coat looks down at you, her face impassive. Finally, the traces of a smile peer out the edges of her mouth. Good work. You remind me of my little indigo brother. Both of you stubborn and unable to accept your fates. Struggling to say the change, even though... They care. You stare up at a moment where the tentacle was only moments ago, waiting for the moment where it comes tearing back into the sky into this reality. But still, nothing happens. Risingly shaking... Rising shakily to your feet, you turn and walk out the spiral staircase out of the tower. Out of the, out of the tower. You step out of the door to the tower. The whole thing suddenly seeming so much smaller and less impressive th than before. The omnipresent hum of the place is completely gone and replaced with only with the sound of nothing. There's no wind here, no birds or animals in this artificial place. For a while, you just sit there and listen to no the nothing sounds of the ship, the vague hum of the engines below, down below. Before you can reflect on this change anymore, Karakara comes running up to you, grinning from ear to ear. Honk! She signs quickly and energetically, completely beyond your ability to understand. Just sit there grinning and nodding along, absolutely lost. She's happy that everything went well. Okay, does everyone know ASL except for you? <laughs> Obviously! Karkara signs another string of words you don't she know. She says Shafani gets to go somewhere safe. Yeah, that is what well, you promised. <laughs> that you'll be able to help her and all the others. You need to talk to Marvin. Oh! He's in his caravan! You step into the caravan to see, find Marvis sitting there, staring at the mirror more intently. Before you can ask if this is a good time or not, he motions for you to come closer. I ain't gonna bite, my orb-headed little buddy. We ought to talk. Just us two. Specifically, we ought to talk about what you just did out there. Marvis sighs, and you can see something in his posture deflate. This is how I figured shit would go down. What does he mean? Will you help Chahud and them send the thing back home? <laughs> Not what I would have done in your shoes. Respect, though. Took some motherfucking conviction. It just didn't feel right leaving Glue Glue Blob stuck like that, and now they're all free to leave if they want. Yeah, about that. You feel something twist and you get it the way he says it. Unforeseen consequences. Empire ain't gonna be happy about this. Just poked out their eye in the sky for our entire cast. Oh, you didn't even think about that. Marvis shrugs. It is what it is. There's ships like this all over the galaxy. Thousands on thousands of purples just like us. And honest... Empire's gonna ignore him. Be more trouble than it's worth to ping every colony ship by every random backwater. But here back home, the one by Alternia, the pride and joy featuring yours truly, they're gonna make a motherfucking example. Oh no. See, you did this whole thing to give them a choice about leaving or not. Marvis motions with the hand to cut you off. Don't start on that, buddy. All of us here, we'll leave with you. Had that conversation while you were spacing out earlier. What about everyone else here on the ship? There must be purple s uh, somewhere, right? Now that the tentacle is destroyed, they'll be able to reconnect. Not to mention all the low bloods on the support decks. What happens to them if the Empire sends soldiers? Look, I know you got a couple things to do still. So I'm gonna have a little talk with everyone and make sure there's a plan. I ain't just leaving my warmer hued sips or high window heads up. Marvis smiles at you, something extremely annoying behind it. Sides, I got a hunch you're gonna make things real. Interesting for the Empire real soon. What does he mean by that? Marvish just shrugs and shakes his head. Nah, I can't spoil it like that. Head on back now, buddy. I suspect you got a friend to meet up with. You nod slowly. You have no idea what Marvis is talking about, but at the very least you could stand to get some air. You take care, buddy. See you when I motherfucking see you. 
Marvis grins and reaches out to clasp you on the back, which nearly knocks you the clean over. With a grin and a flourish, Marvis turns to leave. Gotta see a man about a thing, friend. You don't move right away. Instead, you kind of just stand there, looking over your own reflection in the mirror, wondering about how you changed. It's been a long trip so far, and you're not done yet. Outside, everything is so pleasant. With the looming horror of the dreamscape gone, the, the whole caravan is kind of rushed to charm to it. It feels like a fair right before opening, the whole place brimming with potential. You're so tired, more than anything, and you just want this whole journey to be over. But you still have miles to go before you sleep, but we feel you have your powers back and you can finally go home again. So, one foot after a time, you start making your way back to the center of the carnival. Finally, you're alone again, and it seems much quieter than before, as if the screaming voice that was buried deep inside your cranium has fallen silent to your stillness and it has returned again. With the dreamscape gone, the area of the car around the carnival is a lot less visibly striking, but it's definitely a lot easier on the eyes. Easier on the brain, too, you guess. You sigh, letting the stress of the last few years- What ho? Isn't my old friend once more? Yeah, you sigh, letting the stress of the last few hours out all at once. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Hey, Vigre, you definitely weren't just having an extended dream sequence that involved the ability to have an intimate relationship with him or anything. I must say, this is a bit more than I expected. I thought for sure that big clown was gonna take my head clean off. Does he mean Marvis or Kahoot? <laughs> it, you know, it doesn't matter. You can personally attest to how awesome to all of your purple-blooded friends are. If you say so. That one in the jacket told me the strangest thing. You can feel the chill on your back. You keep it real casual and, and mention that Marvis is the name of that particular clown. Well, he told me I needed to take you back down to Alternia. Send you wanted me more friends. You're having a hard time imagining who he might be except for everyone you knew. You've run into most of them except for Boulder, Emil, and Nikki, you think. Did Marvis mention exactly who he was talking about? Not a word, my fine friend. To be quite honest, I was just glad to leave the conversation with all my limbs still attached. You'll put that one away for another time being. Time to go. You buckle yourself in tight and Rucker grins at you. Off once more, eh? You should consider joining the fleet. You're a natural for this kind of life. You know what? You're good. You had about, uh, had, uh, about as much excitement as you possibly can stomach on this trip. Suit yourself, friend. Let me know if you're ever interested in signing up. Yeah, well, you do that. But honestly, no, you're never going to do that because you're strung out and exhausted and you just want this whole idea to be over. And you had enough of Eternia and Doc Scratch and mysterious porn into the fate that you can only see glimpses of in your mischievous, feverish of dreams. So yeah, you are good. Now it was. Volume 12. Getting up this crazy carnival ride. Uh, great job, everybody. <laughs> yes, I definitely want to save my progress so far. And with that, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, and I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives, and may the stars shine, f uh, may the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Bye-bye, everybody.